So we got a message the other day. I don't know if you saw it, but the question was asked. Doesn't afterthoughts have a negative connotation? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who said that? I missed it. <laughs> Just a, Did I miss it? I don't know. I've CT. A, fr- a friend of ours. A friend of ours. I'm not going to say who it was, but... I told him. Oh yeah, I, I did. I did remember seeing that. I was like, "Where have you been I, the last year?" I, t- I told him. I said, "No the the title of the show is supposed to insinuate that we're thinking of all the things that they couldn't." <laughs> oh, you mean the name itself? I sh- I, I just thought you meant the uh, the feeling around our show. Doesn't afterthoughts aren't they a little? Uh, I don't know. Controversial. The answer is yes. Of course, we are. So. Yeah, okay, so the answer is yes to, to both sides. Everything about the show is negative. Absolutely. But everybody still loves us, right? I don't know, do they? I don't think Schmoville likes us. Make sure you rate and comment. Af- Never mind, it's the Movie Talk fee. <laughs> yeah, let's let us let Movie Talk and Mailbag pimp the rating and review on iTunes. We will just step back, let them do that, but we will, uh, we'll just think of all their ideas, but th- they can pimp out the, the rating and review on iTunes. It's actually kind of refreshing to think about. <laughs> like, we don't have to really do a lot of the legwork. and I don't really have to explain to people what afterthoughts are in my everyday life. I'm, I just kind of say, you're not going to understand, okay? You're just not. <laughs> so, for the most part, it's so inside baseball, I just don't even have to worry about it. It's like, if you know what Collider is, then yes, we can have this conversation. But for the rest of you people, it's, it's, it's fine. It's well, okay. you know that I felt a lot of pressure when when we transferred the show from After Smoke to this. It was a bigger stage. I was a little bit more nervous. It ended up being the exact same thing. But if anything, it has less pressure because we have more support than ever. Um, but there's also things like we don't have a deadline necessarily. We had a deadline on SK Plus. It was Friday by whatever, whatever. And this past weekend, I just didn't send <laughs> the video file to RB3. <laughs> and uh, he finally texted me on Saturday night and was like, do you have afterthoughts? I was like, yeah, I just couldn't get my internet to work. And But I, it was so weird to me how I thought about the fact that I just didn't mind that it wasn't on SK+. Plus, where That's not at all how I would feel about any episode of After Smoke. Yeah, we're feeling, uh, feeling a little bit fancy about ourselves We'll talk about it a little bit later, but we had um, we had an interaction with Christian this weekend, and you know the the post afterthoughts uh, group text we have. I was feeling a little frisky. I was, I was feeling a little hot. Yeah, gave him a piece of my mind. Yeah, um, I was a little perturbed. Shut it, Harlow. I was a little perturbed Sorry. because he wanted us to revert back to the old theme song, and then he asked, "Won't you?" Uh, Put put it on a pole in uh, in Schmoville and see if see if and I said no I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna do that why don't you why don't you post in there see how well you well we'll get to that we'll we'll get to, <laughs> okay but anyway yeah I'm just not gonna do that as a matter of fact I have a brand new theme song just for Christian Harloff take it away Eric. <laughs> Thanks for checking out Collider Afterthoughts, the show that examines the content and fandom at Collider. I'm Ryan Snelling, Jay Williams. That's me, a guy that talks about some stuff on the internet. How is it going? I feel great. Yeah, you like that? Like, I feel really, really good. Not only was it just a great day today, but I just feel really good about the show. I feel really good about Collider. The sun is shining. It's hot as it's hot. Like I it's the first this is, is the it? first time. Yeah, it's hot. I was outside hmm. today. I mowed the grass. Um it's the first time that I've sweat because of weather uh in a really really long time and it made me happy. What is this after weather? You know I hate talking about the weather. That's why I tried to segue it into sweat and mowing grass, but it always comes it. back to the weather, doesn't it? Yeah, you started it. Yeah, you're right. But no, another reason why I feel great. It's because I mentioned before the theme, we 
are so lucky, Jay. We are so lucky to have great fans like Frank Luca Tuardo. But then something else happened. Hmm. Yeah, I have a different take. What's your take? Well, this guy, he uh, followed me on the old Instagram. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to slide into them DMs. Mm -hmm. Trying to see what what life is all about on my end of the world. Um, Are you talking about Christian? No. Uh, Frank follows me on Instagram and I saw a post and I thought, well, hello, new friend. Just gonna drop a little comment here. Say say what's up. Dropped a little comment on the on the post. Didn't hear a damn word. Oh my goodness. Just I mean, sitting out here in old Kentucky, mm. working my fingers to the bone. Hmm. And this man doesn't even have the decency to holler back at your boy. And uh it was it was quite disappointing. What if it was jet lag related? I don't know what that means. What do you mean? You mean because he was in China? He could have been tired. Maybe he set his phone down. He had to get some sleep. He took some melatonin. Jet lag. He was in Singapore. Yeah, whatever. Should have commented back. The other turn of events was that we got a new fan in Perry Nemiroff. Now, this is very exciting for us. We've been talking about Perry for a long time. We're big fans. You and I at the same time texted each other a screenshot that she had just followed us on Twitter she was uh, raving about us on Movie Talk, and I remember saying to you, "This is it." Yeah, I mean, it, we're gonna we're gonna get Perry on the show, and and for for a while, I forgot entirely about Frank. Listen, uh, you and I, as one, as afterthoughts, we like to rummage around in the tall grass like a couple of Pokemon masters hunting for some rare collider beasts. We captured what I like to call a Mewtwo, in in Perry Nemiroff. She she a Mewtwo or more of like a an Alakazam or something like that. What do you think? What sort of Pokemon is Perry? Well, Mewtwo is a mutant, and I wouldn't call I wouldn't call Perry a mutant. Why I was not more just... speaking to her her rarity. Okay, let's do a Perry is a Nine Tails. Okay, <laughs> holographic holographic Nine Tails. Oh, you're talking about the cards? Wow, super nerd. Um, so. Yeah, I was speaking to a rarity. I feel like kept capturing a Mewtwo would be like capturing Nine- a Koi Jandru or something like that. Nine Tails is uh, rare. Yeah, th- it's a rare card, but uh, well, yeah, I guess you'd have to. Have- Anyways, the point being is, yeah, I never, I never expected to uh, to wake up on whatever day that was. She was on Movie Talk. Hear her uh, comment about the show. Very grateful for her words. Um, now, if we can just get the rest of the people in Burbank to know who in the hell we are. So Shout out to Thad. I mentioned... Uh, <laughs> Thad just sends us automated messages. I'm out of the office for the weekend. Please please refer to Cody Hall. No. Um, so I forgot about Frank up until last night. I went to SK Plus where our weekly show, Sight and Sound Weekly, drops every single Monday, by the way. Go subscribe to SK Plus if you haven't already. Or just come find us at Sight and Sound. Link's in the description down below. I was all high on Perry Nemiroff. I go to Sight and Sound on SK Plus, and I realize that Frank has not only commented once on the show, but he's commented twice. So now we have Frank listening to Sight and Sound, and then again, Frank one-ups Perry, and it's an all-out war. Jay, it's really, really thrilling. Yeah, but now I'm going to be searching through our own personal Sight and Sound YouTube uh, subscriber list to see if that motherfucker is subscribed, because if he's not, then what are you really doing? I hope I hope to see him in our, in our Patreon uh, patron <laughs> list at some point as well. Why'd you just get so upset? I'm just I'm bitter. I'm bitter about the Instagram stuff, all right? It's I've I've been bitten once by Harloff, been bitten twice by Mark Fernandez. He follows you. He doesn't seem to follow me. Right. Uh at least I got me a Frank though. But no, I, I'm very thankful that they uh they shouted us out and had a, a little Roca, on the other hand, was a little a little peeved because we had I, a, whoa, whoa, whoa. I am convinced we have talked to Roca on multiple occasions. I am convinced that that man still doesn't <laughs> realize that he's been on our show 
multiple times. Not this show, but across many shows. Yeah. So when I was doing Film Beef, he was on like two or three. No, actually, no. He was on at least five episodes of Film Beef because we were doing Game of Thrones stuff with him before Collider did. As a matter of fact, he used one of Film Beef one of Film Beef's co-hosts as an informant on the Collider video show and shouted him out on air because he was helping Roka host that show. Just sold you out. Shout out Film Beef. And then RIP. He started uh he started uh he was a guest on Sight and Sound a couple of times. Like that's a show that we're still doing. I don't know if he realizes that it's the same Ryan and Jay on this show and that show. Not to mention his after smoke appearances. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about Perry. What a nice uh what a nice little engagement we had, not we had, that she had with us via the internet. Uh, obviously shepherded along by the fantastic Mark Ellis doing as Mark normally does being a fantastic host of movie talk, but also just a great friend. I mean, a a really great guy that Mark Ellis. Yeah. I want to address what he said. Um, it'll kind of lump movie talk as a discussion point in here as well, because honestly, movie talk isn't actually a discussion point for, for this show. And I wanted to talk about it uh, a little bit because I know, when we were doing After Schmo, there was a conscious effort to speak about Ellis as much as Christian because we were covering Schmo's no stuff. But as we sort of transition in, into Collider and we're very aware that Ellis is just part time, he's only hosting movie talk on a consistent basis, he might come in and out of other shows. Movie talk is the show that changes probably the least amount um and you can correct me it probably well i think all three flagship shows why is it that we have more to say about heroes and jedi council because when ellis mentioned like he appreciates our criticism i'm sitting there thinking you know i we probably talk the least about ellis and movie talk seems to be just in in a good way consistently on point you know it just doesn't it doesn't budge much in in a good way right yeah i mean well to speak to what you said i I think what you were sort of getting to was the fact that the three core shows movie talk jedi council heroes they have a certain amount of consistency to them because you need a youtube channel to be built on on that in some shape or form it's great to offer a bunch of new things it'd be experimental and and stuff like that but people need to feel at home and comfortable that they're going to be getting the same sort of content that they're always going to be getting via somewhere and that's primarily where we get it uh heroes and jedi council both have the ability in their formats to be a little bit more loose to try new things. Maybe not Jedi council as much, although they do some different things. Obviously we'll talk about the Denny's episode, but they have a little bit more structure, I think than something like heroes. Yes. Heroes has the pull list and this and that, and they have uh, minor mutations, but it, it can go in a new, a number of different directions. Movie talk is just basically recapping the most recent up-to-date news and having debates and this and that. And we've talked about before on when we were doing After Schmo, how if it's just a whole episode of just giving takes, I mean, there's not a whole lot for us to comment on outside of maybe an interesting talking point or a, an interesting back and forth that two people had. But if we're getting pretty straightforward just takes, and this isn't disparaging to what we got this week, then right. there's just not a whole lot to talk about because we're we're not a movie show. We're not going to give our opinions of their movie takes. We can just sort of comment on the more meta things that we see. I just can't think of an example. Like I can't think of a a negative talking point with Ellis because he's a pro and he's a handler. I mean, he really handles that show. Like if we were going to talk about Snap, you and I have criticized his flailing um, uh, scoops that just have almost no merit at all, (laughs) even though we have fun with it, but it's still something to to consider for the show and talk about. And, you know, we could talk about Christian maybe stumbling when he hosts the show, but it's like when we talk about Ellis, it's just that he handles that so well. And when there are change-ups, like it goes from a four-person table to a three-person table, yeah, we handle all of that stuff. It was just funny how when when I heard him, mention that he welcomes our criticism i thought to myself you know what we just 
I don't have a lot to say uh, when it comes to when it comes to criticism of Mark Ellis, and I hope he doesn't think that that's a cop out. It's just that's just genuinely how I feel until something arises that that makes me come out and say something. Yeah, but, I mean, I agree 100. percent It's hard to criticize a, a Steve Nash or a John Stockton, somebody that's just dishing the ball. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and also just doing their job. I think. You could maybe, if I was just really digging deep and tried to explore some potential devil's advocate sort of uh, debates that somebody would have, or not debates, but um, sort of nitpicks that somebody would have, it would be, well, if you don't have a lot of uh, criticisms for him and he's sort of just on point every single episode, could it be potentially that he's playing it particularly safe? And and I don't think that's the case. I think Mark... I think Mark structure i mean we've heard this via christian's carpool sometimes that mark will give him a either mark ellis or mark riley whoever will give him a list of things to prepare for watch this trailer make sure you're ready to talk about this or make sure you're ready to talk about that and he has everything wrapped up so nicely when he's coming on air to present his points and we've also talked too about he he has the advantage of being able to dish out a story hear people's takes and debates and while he's listening sort of formulate the best point of view and the best perspective from other individuals that are on the show and I think he's just executing that very very well so sorry Mark I guess we don't have you as a listener week to week actually I'm pretty sure he listens week to week but you're not going to get any uh, criticism out of us this week well if Ellis could be listening to this and he could call bullshit and just think well you you got to give me something. So let's not just make it about Mark Ellis. If I asked you, Jay, what the hell do you have to say about Mark Riley? That's negative criticism, constructive criticism. What the hell do you have to say about a Perry Nemiroff? It's it's hard, and maybe maybe that speaks a little bit more to the fact that like we talk a lot about Collider as a whole. We'll talk about things that Christian dishes out because he has all these avenues and he's constantly updating us about changes and this and that. It's like we comment on a lot of that stuff, but maybe we shouldn't confuse it as us criticizing Christian. Like it's not like we criticize the shit out of Christian and say nothing about Ellis. It's really just not a whole lot of personal criticism, right? Yeah, I mean, frequency on the network is obviously going to lend itself to being out there for more criticism. Like, for instance, Roka is on so much. He's on so much stuff. And, you know, we, if we wanted to, we can nitpick something that Roka does. Or John Schnepp pops up a lot. And John, the thing that I love about John Schnepp, and, and we joke a lot ab- about him, and we have a lot of fun with the things that he says. But at the end of the day, I think why he is so fun to watch is because I just don't think he gives a fuck. And I don't mean, (laughs) I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean to where he's just like, man, I feel honored. I'm a fucking fan being able to sit here at this table and give my opinions and takes. And I'm going to talk like a fan. He sounds like a fan when he talks Yeah, and he's relatable in that way. Um, You know, I I think we've been critical of people who are more rotating guests at the table in the past. You know, while I appreciate Andrew Guy, I don't think he brought as much to the table as other people have in in the past when he appeared. That's not, I don't think he was a bad presence at the table. It just didn't bring anything that I thought was particularly exciting. I don't mean to bring that up specifically to nail him down, but it's just an example I had on the top, uh, top of my head. Well, I'll give you an example. I can't remember what the guy's name was, but he was on with... Um, oh, who's he on with? He might have been on with Danny Fernandez, who was that that director. It was like a Darian or Damien or something like that. Because I remember mentioning that on the show as well. Because you had you had asked me the question, uh, do you like the three person table or the four person table? And you were a champion of that th- that the three chair. But that was an example of an episode. It was like Ellis, Danny, and Damien, and I was like a four person chair. Or a fourth person probably would have made that episode better. And that was the example that I gave because I just, I didn't feel like he showed up to say anything more than, I think this could be good. Okay, moving on. Like, it it just wasn't, 
I think your point, what you're making is when people show up to movie talk for the very first time, you want them to feel like they are making an impression, an impression. You have to give them a reason to bring you back. If you want to sing for your supper, if you will, I think that's the main point that we're arriving at with those people. Yeah, I think you're right. I, and I've made this point before. I don't know if necessarily I've made it when, um, since afterthoughts has been a thing, but I've been pretty not critical, but I've been yearning for and wanting more personalities within Collider and more characters within Collider. And I don't mean actual just new people. I mean, I don't just want the straight up sports interview take like, oh, yeah, we played really hard today, practiced our butts off, and, you know, it just wasn't our game. I, I'm not looking for that. I need people with, mm-hmm. with some actual pizzazz, some charisma. And not only do I think they... Uh, I think when new people come on, they try to be a little bit more suit and tie, a little bit more straight laced. But I think, I don't know if this is a conscientious thing that they've done, but I think the way that they've structured things now, specifically with the three person table and the way Mark is handling the discussions on movie talk, I think it has allowed for more fun to be more loose for more personality to come out Uh, as, as fantastic as a pundit, as, as Perry is, I think she's starting to show more of her very just lovable personality and just, you know, what's so great about Perry is that she can let loose, especially with her debates with Roka. She can Mm -hmm. let loose with, with the knowledge that she has and be like, I don't specifically have to be so straight laced and straightforward with my takes in order to present how brilliant I am as a movie pundit. I can, I can, go off the cuff i can go off quote unquote off script and just completely thrash roca right now if i want to <laughs> and it and it's it's fantastic i think she's uh you, we do this thing on sight and sound called the uh pop culture crown and at the end of the year we we do a month by month take on like who won the month and i think obviously because she's a big fan of ours i would have given this month Maybe I would have given April to Frank, but this month definitely goes to Perry. Oh, you're already crowning May's uh, winner. That's that's of course, uh, yeah, uh, of course. So anyway, I'm. Who else is it going to be? Well, I I think if Frank keeps showing up, w- watch Frank like comment on our Legion recap. Then it's game over. Sorry, we're gonna have to duke that out. <laughs> watch him buy a shirt from our T Public. <laughs> <laughs> he bought he bought our uh, Donald Glover shirt. By the way. Speaking of, since we're talking about movie talk and Snap, Snap dropped a, a, and referenced "This Is America." I want a number. How many people in that office do you actually think knew what the hell Snap was talking about? Because he said "This Is America," winked at the camera, and nobody said a word. Is is Dorian? Um, is Dorian the only other person? Because he's a, know, he's a young person and is with it like we are. You know what? I'm actually, this may surprise you, I'm actually going to go against that and say that I think most people knew what that was. And this is, I know obviously I'm breaking the fourth wall in terms of talking about Collider. That song, is it sort of transcends so much. It, it is, without a doubt, broken through into another echelon of the zeitgeist. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that everybody knew what that was was in reference to yeah i'm still gonna crush them i'm gonna i'm gonna go the other way they're uh they're out of touch but uh it's fair fair enough point it was a trending uh video on youtube um Makuga once asked can donald glover sing <laughs> in reference to uh asking about his casting as simba in the lion king can donald glover sing yes he can he's fantastic at it. seasoned uh seasoned vets over there at the at the collider studio um so I mentioned things that Christian keeps us updated on. There's also plenty of things that we don't get updates on. Sometimes shows just drop. Oh, yeah. Sometimes things just happen. And you and I look at each other like, where the hell did that come from? I know you had a point to make uh, about like some of the social media stuff that they did this past week. Well, first of all, I think Dorian, I actually tweeted about this, Dorian has stepped up quite a bit this week specifically we've been calling for more instagram stories not just posts of thumbnails that we can also see on the youtube channel but we want to see more behind the scenes stuff we want to see more 
things like that. And we've actually gotten that. I don't know if you paid attention to their stories this week, but we've gotten a lot of behind the scenes stuff. We saw uh, John Roca present Perry with a, 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 some sort of cat worship t-shirt, which is fine. uh, And, and I'm okay with that, but we got to see Wendy in there. We hardly get to see Wendy at all. Yeah, absolutely. And, And so that's been very, very nice to see. We also got some behind the scenes footage of them shooting, some sort of brand new show. I, I don't. Uh, neither of us knew what this was specifically, but it, it seemed to have been like a, a show. Sort of. I, I at first I thought it was going to be the pull list from Heroes done as a separate show. What was your take on this uh, Man on the Street comic book pickup show that came out on social media? So yeah. So I I want the guys listening to this too. I I want them to hear how we sort of interpreted this because I think it was, I think it was Dorian who posted about it personally first because he posted a picture of him just holding the mic with the collider emblem and the hashtag, the hashtags were just like comic book and comic book drop. And because that was so specific, I, I had texted you. I think they're doing something new since it's, since it's Wednesday and so, the, like you said, we went back and forth, like, are they just pulling the comic book pull list segment out of Heroes and doing... But then we were like, we backtracked and said, well, right now, Snep is recording his episode of Heroes with with uh, Rob Liefeld. And Dorian is the one with the mic, so we really didn't know what it was going to be. Um, and I still don't, because I saw the video. Did you see the video? I did. I saw it. it okay. It's, uh, the way, and it seems like it was made specifically for social media, which I like that. I think it's I think it's really cool. The behind the scenes video we saw, I mean, it looked like Mark Riley was sort of producing this or directing it or whatever. And, uh, from what I could tell, it looked like a full force sort of attempt to make the social media video. Is that sort of your temperature on what was going on? Yes, but I only saw it on Instagram. Is that how you watched it, or did you see it on Twitter and Facebook, too? I only saw it on Instagram. Let me ask you this question. What is your take on the production quality of this video and then to have gotten the video only distributed on social media like this? Uh, I can't remember. Did it open with a title card or anything? Like, I can't the, remember. The, this is more of a question. I'm going to pull it up while okay. you're talking. Yeah, this is just more of a question than a criticism because I was thinking a lot about how how you let people know that you have a show on Instagram. So does that mean that you have like you have a title card that for three seconds, that way there's a bit of time where your follower is scrolling and see something that catches their eye and then they continue the video? Are they going to post a picture you know, an hour before each episode drops. That way we know to go check back with the Instagram. I'm thinking a lot about how you would go about this because I'm not, I don't have a whole lot of criticism towards the actual product that we got. I do think it's a show that uh, can bring a new, uh, just interviewing people on the street and letting them know they're on Collider. That's, that's an interesting idea. I think you run the risk of becoming as good as your guest at that point. But then again, you do, you are able to control it in the editing room. So maybe you just never put people in there or maybe they aren't even approached in the first place. If people don't want to be on camera, they'll say no. So, uh, I'd be curious to see how that unfolds. So there was no title card, but the structure of this video was structured. Like you would see typical videos on Instagram. It has the, uh, the, the top and bottom sort of title bars. And that is very eye catching. I mean, it it sort of tells you exactly what you're getting into. It says it's Wednesday at top at the top. And then at the bottom, it says that means new comics, the video itself. I mean, it's produced like you would see any video on Mm -hmm. YouTube. And I think that's good. And the quality definitely makes it stand above other things. I mean, 
it, it has Dorian doing a fantastic job. I, I need to just give him a shout out real quick. I think Dorian did a fantastic job hosting this. He's got his microphone with the Collider logo on it. And it's edited. It's very, very edited. Not just chop, not just jump cuts between different things, but transitions showing the different comic mm-hmm. books, which I think is really cool. And I think it's really, really good. The thing that I'm worried about with this is that Whoops, I accidentally hit the uh, audio on it. Um, the uh, w- There's been a lot of talk last week and then via Christian's carpool this week and then some stuff we've talked about off air about manpower at Collider. And while I think that this is a fantastic video to do on social media, it's a fantastic experiment to do on social media, I still think that there's too much going into this right now. I think they need to experiment with less first and then up their game on things because I I just, I I don't know if, if that much needs to go into it. It looks great. It's fantastic. But tactically speaking, because things are spread so thin, I don't know if that's specifically what you have to be doing. And I don't want them to think that's what you have to do on social media just to make it. You don't have to do anything, right, Jay? That's right. And, uh, you know, I I would hate for them to say, well, this didn't get the pop that we thought it would compared to the manpower right. and the hours and the time that we spent. So let's just not do it because it doesn't have to be that if if they don't care about that, and they want to keep doing it. And that's fine. But I don't want them to have some sort of tactical, strategical meeting about if this worked right. or not and have that come out that's of their a mouth. Whole... The Sorry, first... go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the the first thing that they should say was, well, how can we scale this back and then examine how I was to just going to ask. That, that's a whole other thing that, honestly, we'd probably have to hear from them. Like, I know when we were talking about the top 50 comic book uh, movie videos and the, the Spielberg videos, I think their goal for each was 20,000. So it's like, how are they quantifying their Instagram goals? Because, again, I think Instagram on its own is a model where – People are less aware that it's a show thing to watch. Um, I'd just be curious to sort of hear how you and I understand making content for Facebook video and YouTube video, but Instagram is, that's something we're going to learn as we go. But so you're saying that purely because Dorian is standing in the image with the microphone and they have the title bars. This is a question, not a criticism. Uh, Just because the bars are there and there's a guy with a microphone that's enough to pull you in, you're saying that's effective? Absolutely. I mean, if you... So what I... As just speaking as a fan, not somebody that's here to break things down, I... The video itself was informative. The content of the video was informative. Well, if, if somebody if somebody sh- sent this to me and was like, "Hey, are you interested in knowing about the comic books that came out this week?" and it was Dorian standing there filming selfie style with his phone, it would have worked just as well. It would have been fine. That that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's like it's it's delivery versus, you know, what you're putting in. Well, into. I think I think if I was going to make a complaint, well again, it's in the form of a question though. I don't think all of the comics that were covered in that video were actually that week's new releases because they, Okay. Uh, one of the, I think a gentleman mentioned that he, and, and I could be totally wrong and that's fine, but um, he mentioned reading something like Nailbiter. I think it was a title called Nailbiter. And when I went, I was on Comixology last night and what I found with the cover that they used, it wasn't a new release. So maybe they used the wrong image or maybe I misunderstood, but um, I, I might just need extra clarification for that because that is the point of the video to cover that specific week's releases. I mean, I just have to assume that, right? As opposed to, yeah, as opposed sure. to just casual, what are you reading type stuff. For sure. And uh, I mean, there's also, you also have to think about too, I don't know if they plan on distributing something. I don't know if they plan on distributing the same video in longer form on YouTube or something like that. Or maybe it was, maybe it exists in longer form on Facebook. I don't know. There's also no reason why you can't do, you can't film something live. You know what I'm saying? On Instagram live that is longer and then it lasts, it exists for an entire day. And 
so uh, maybe they know this, maybe they don't know this. The The way of the Instagram feed is essentially becoming archaic. Yes, people post things there and people can see things there. The Instagram story is everything. Yeah. It, it is the only thing that is in real-time notification. And then if you film something live, that video always starts at the front of the, the entire line of stories, no matter what, until somebody clicks on it and watches right. it. So... It, there is so much more time. There's so much more potential, I think, with that story and really well-produced content living via uh, the Instagram story. I agree. I mean, the people that I get notifications for, like Ashley V. Robinson always goes live. I get those notifications. I get all of Jay Washington's notifications. I don't see Collider Video going live hardly ever. So right. that is it's a great point to, to consider. So... You mentioned sort of the the either or game, like is comic book drop the answer as opposed to everything else that we're looking at. You and I off air keep asking each other, what the hell is going on with comic book shopping? So I'm not assuming that it's either or with this because there's no, I, I don't have a reason why they can't do both, but it's like, I just want to know when the hell that's coming back. I, I just, when's that coming back, Jack? Yeah, I mean, I had thought that a while ago, I don't remember how long, I thought we had gotten some news that they were filming or that they were in planning stages, uh, like pre-production sort of planning stages of putting it together. To my knowledge, the first season was a success. Um, I don't know what it did for Collider specifically, but um, yeah, I think it's I think it's time to bring it back, especially with so many new faces, especially with so many new faces coming for avengers stuff i mean i myself i had the bug i had the uh marvel Mm -hmm. bug i went out and i got um i went out and got marvel unlimited and i'm sure there's people like me who have the bug want more stuff let's capitalize on those new comic book fans and show them uh this fantastic comic book comment or content even going so far as experimenting with reposting it, re-uploading it, I think that might even be a nice test. It's been that's something that I've heard <laughs> our good buddy uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talking about lately is reposting your popular content for for new people who might have missed it. Um, that's something they could potentially experiment with doing. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember hearing about them f- filming new stuff, but. You're you're right. I do think you had people like uh, I think his name was Jacob Babylon or Babylon Babylon who was in Spider Man Homecoming. Like, why couldn't you get somebody in from uh, from Infinity War? I remember proposing to Snap, and this must have been like six to nine months ago when he revealed that um, Farva from Super Troopers is someone that he knows, someone that he's friends with, and I remember texting him saying. You've got to get him on comic book shopping around the time the Super Troopers comes out, and which was you know like two weeks ago, and that's when I really started thinking about comic book shopping again because I was like, man, I wanted them to do that, <laughs> and they didn't. So I don't know. Well, I think we'll get into. I mean, we might be ready to sort of talk about it right now. I I kind of want to cover. I want to have this very general discussion about either or when it comes to their programming and it's sort of a response to Christian's response to our conversation with TV programming. Um, I, I, are you ready to get into that or did you have anything else before I yeah. move forward? No, I'm ready. Let's, uh, let's deep so down. the original question I had for you when I sort of explained what kind of conversation I wanted to have here, it's should Har- the first question was should Harloff carpool be the afterthoughts after show. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, are you always comfortable with him? I think when I watch Christian respond to us, I don't think he's always, I don't think he interprets everything we say properly because a lot of the times when I'm watching his videos, I, I'm on the defense. Like, that's not what we said. That's not what we meant. Um, and then I want to ask him additional questions. Like, you're I, you, sometimes his answers just aren't good enough because he misinterprets what we say. Uh, and then I think about it, well, I don't need to do that here because we can just save it for the show. What's How do you feel about afterthoughts on, on Carpool and that relationship that we have? 
Well, first of all, I would say that 99% of the time, mo- like most episodes, almost every episode except for this one, I think I was, I've never been on the defensive really. I've all, I've, it's, I've watched it. It's been okay. If he has a comment about our show and it, it you're is, just there to have a good time. You just have a good time with it pretty much. And yeah. And in terms of him even discussing it or bringing it up at all, I mean, even if he were to never name drop, like even if he were to say, I was listening to a show about Collider <laughs> and they were saying this and here's how it actually is. I actually think that's good. I think that's good for people to hear, not even because it, it promotes our show, but specifically because, listen, we went through a whole period of of Doomsday Clock uh, Schmoville and Doomsday Clock Collider-verse and Collider fandom where the criticism was transparency. We know now and we preached then that they they couldn't be as forthcoming as they even wanted to be because of how things were going down. So I do think it's good that there is an avenue for people to hear what's going on at Collider a little bit more deeper, on a deeper level than just watching the video. So I do think that's warranted. This past week's carpool, the, the only one we got, we, obviously this is Thursday when we're recording this, so maybe he's done one on Friday, but the Monday version of carpool was – fascinating because over the weekend Christian had a conversation with us about television coverage on Collider because we had talked about it on last week's Afterthoughts and that's fine and and I completely agree with a lot of the things he said he echoed a lot of our sentiments about things that we already know things that we've talked about last week that I'm not specifically going to echo but I will say Ryan and I completely agree and completely acknowledge that the format that existed of TV talk, not only did it not work, I don't think it can ever work. It, it just can't. You can't talk about every television show that's ever existed on one hour long YouTube channel. Or right. on, I'm sorry, on one hour long YouTube episode. It just can't be done. He agreed with us in terms of uh, recaps being podcast based and this and that. My whole the thing that was frustrating for me watching it was I wish I could have had the dialogue with him there because when he brought up Atlanta and Legion would not do numbers on the YouTube channel, I was sitting there saying, "Yeah, I know. We know a hundred percent that it wouldn't." Right, <clears throat> and him bringing up uh, Cobra Kai. Yeah, I think Cobra Kai could do good because it lives on YouTube and they they put out one of, if not the first recap on YouTube that I even saw of it. So yeah, you are going mm-hmm. to be able to hit that. And last last but not least is the whole Westworld thing. Listen, uh, I Westworld is not a maybe it will, maybe it won't. I would be willing to put down legitimate money that any Westworld video they put out would break that 20,000 threshold specifically because it's on Collider. It could be Makuga farting into the microphone, the theme song of Westworld, every episode, and it would still break 20,000 views because the show is that big and Collider has a funneled down audience of its viewers. It's just, it's not like, it's a no brainer at this point. It so, should be done. Go ahead. Right. Okay. So to, to speak to carpool real quick, and then I'll go back to your point. Like I'm in no way complaining about the attention we get on that show. I think, and you're, you're probably approaching carpool the better way, which is you're not really on the defensive. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is it's not the most effective way to communicate my point with carpool. So if I did have more of your apo- approach, I can just wait until I do the show and then reiterate or rephrase <laughs> or whatever I have to do to get my point across. So again, to your point, I'm not at all saying start a Legion after show right now because specifically with Legion, the numbers are actually declining week to week. Um, that's why I made sure, and he didn't mention this at all, that's why part of my point was, if you wanted to, you can insert it into a video that already exists like Heroes. Or, 
you can make a podcast for a show that these people are watching anyway. And I thought I made that very clear because I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to reiterate, I was trying to make the point that you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. If these people can do it anyway, or if you can insert it into something that already exists, I'm not asking you to take 30 minutes to an hour out of your day to create a brand new TV content. So none of that was really addressed. So it just felt like my rebuttal to him would just be the same points that I had made originally. Um, and I think part of it too is that it's possible that he's saying like, look, TV's not in the cards because we have all of this stuff. He has way more knowledge about what's going on at Collider than we do. So if there are things in the pipeline that he can't bring up yet, and it's just his way of saying we can't do TV coverage because of all of this other stuff, then that's fine. I just I just didn't buy, and he told me to buy it, but I still don't buy his, his justifications because this Cobra Kai thing, you're exactly right, but they didn't try. He just happened he just happened upon that show because he likes the franchise and it sounded cool. And he got the buzz on it, because otherwise Christian Harloff, he's not on top of television. This was a complete outlier with his viewing, his viewership patterns. So he did not make an effort to make that video, and here we are at 42,000 views. It did better than the episode of Movie Talk. It's like, go figure. It did better than that day's Movie Talk. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I don't want to beat a, a dead horse with this, even though I really, really don't like horses. The the fact <laughs> the fact of the matter is that I think it's sort of a balls in your court now, Collider, with this TV stuff. Yes, 100%. And I need everybody listening to pay attention to what I'm about to say. The movie space and how to cover news, it is so much more easy to plan out your next move than it is with television. Yes, it requires you to take a little bit of a risk. You have to kind of bet on what it is you're going to cover. I mean, look at their uh, Walking Dead stuff. Walking Dead fell off and they had to drop out midway through the season. I've had to do that. I've had to hedge my bets on a show and I, that I checked out halfway on. So I get the danger in it, but... It, there are certain things that you can foresee. Uh, I think because of the attention that they were putting into Westworld that, and because of what Westworld was going to be and who was involved with it, that we knew it was going to be this mystery box sort of show that was going to have a lot of online speculation. And that's something I think you can prepare for. I think something like uh, an Atlanta, you can look at and say, this might not hit with people. Right, it might right. not hit with people across the board. You can, you can bet on those sort of things. Something like, something like Cobra Kai. I don't know because that's not specifically my wheelhouse. But yeah, it, it is something that that I'm sure Collider could look at and say we have a large group of people that work here that can associate with this. It lives on YouTube. YouTube could be could have vested interest in us talking about this. And, you know, maybe we can actually push this. And it's definitely more risky, but I think now because of the results like this, it's something that they should look at and at least have their head on a swivel for in terms of looking like, okay, maybe we don't do a, a TV show every week or maybe we don't have a constantly running TV type of content show that we're putting out, but maybe we at least need to be paying attention to what could be the next thing. Because these are just views and honestly, an audience, do not get it twisted. The movie and television audience is not a 100% crossover. Definitely you not. All the, you want more fans to come over to Collider from a completely different space? It just lives somewhere else with television. I'm, I'm also not convinced, and again, to make sure that we're having a new version of this conversation as opposed to uh, beating a dead horse, like you said, I'm just not... <laughs> the way that they've colored, covered television so far, they did episode by episode Netflix reviews. And that's what's great about Cobra Kai. It's like, should they be thinking about every Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, 
doing a full season review of whatever dropped on Netflix last Friday. If everybody, th- they could do a rotation, like first week of the month, Riley, whatever. I don't know exactly how it would work. I'm just throwing out ideas. It's my job to come up with the ideas. It's their job to apply them uh, w- within their structure. <laughs> um, they could assign like Riley and Roka get the series at the first week of every month. And whatever that Friday show is, they binge it. They cover it by Wednesday of the next week. I think that's interesting if they take that approach. The problem is they seem so dead set against um, introducing any more TV coverage, but they literally have never, ever done it the most effective way. The uh, the recap shows that Campia did, they started out doing six at a time, and they committed to shows that were 22 episodes a week. Like, that's not the same thing that we're talking about. We're talking about covering Westworld. There's a cycle of Westworld that's eight to ten episodes. And right then and there, each if you cover TV that way, each recap or each video is its own experiment because it's like how well did Westworld do versus how well did the night of do or Barry or whatever because it's cyclical you're not making a nine month commitment it's just not the same and you're not recapping a Netflix show episode by after episode because when I watch Netflix shows when I watch Marvel Netflix series I don't stop Jessica Jones episode four to watch you on Collider recap the show I'm moving on to episode five. That's just not the viewing habits. So it, it's it's also just not the most efficient. In fact, I would go so far to say that I've I've never seen anybody do a Netflix episode by episode review. I've I've seen half season reviews. I've seen full season reviews. I've seen written episode by episode reviews. But Collider's been the only people to actually do an episode by episode right. review. Of and and like I'm not that. saying um, I'm not saying that those yeah. never surpassed like 10,000. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're decent numbers, but it's not it's not something that contributes to the idea of TV coverage doesn't work on Collider if that makes sense because it it was never the most efficient way to do it in the first place. I think the conversation moving forward after looking at the success of the Cobra Kai thing needs to be not do we do it or do we not do it? It needs to be, can there be an efficient way to do this with the current state of things? Because to go back to something we haven't touched on yet, that I agree with Christian on, that he brought uh, to the forefront in his carpool, was it's something that I reiterated multiple times in the episode last week, that I am giving them more of the benefit of the doubt because they're they're spread so thin. They don't have, they're super busy. I get all of that. I get all of it 100%. Yeah. But with the right planning with the right strategy and with the right uh, figuring out, is this the most efficient way to do something or not? I think it can be executed. And I think at the very bare minimum, they should be having a conversation. If we can't commit to a weekly thing and this and that, which I don't think they should, I think they should at least bare minimum say who here has been watching Westworld that feels like they can have a good conversation about it. If that's Perry and she raises her hand, the second, the second that finale ends, you have a review of some sort filmed and you put it up on the channel, full season review, 10 minutes, whatever, watch the views climb like crazy. And like you said, you use those season reviews in your, in your trial run of things to say this had a pop Maybe we go down this avenue with a po- I don't know a podcast or whatever the case may be, um, right? And if you want to have something longer form regarding television, put it on a podcast. In fact, the video supports the podcast. Say if you want to hear a longer conversation about this, an hour long, hour and a half long conversation about this show, go to the podcast. That and that's another thing too. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, what I just described a second ago when it came to topical cyclical hot TV dramas, that's what they did for Game of Thrones and Walking Dead. And they were su- right. they were very successful. Why did you stop doing that? Are, it, are Is every show that you're going to cover after that going to be as big as The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones? No. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you should just count out every other show. The other thing that was annoying and disappointing is that it was in the title of the episode of Afterthoughts. It was a... I was speaking to prepping 
for fall TV coverage, mainly something that's three to four months away. And it was just annoying and disappointing that the response we got was already shutting down that idea. And I was just like, wait a minute, I'm asking you to consider something down the road, not, well, actually this week I'm going to challenge them to do something in a couple weeks because to your point, if Fernandez looks at the office and says, who here is the biggest, give me two or three of the biggest Arrested Development fans. Then take someone who isn't an Arrested Development fan at all. You have a three-person, four-person table to binge season five when it comes out in like two weeks I think and then you can do exactly what you did for Cobra Kai and it doesn't even have to be 20 minutes it can be 10 minutes as long as as people are covering some of those really topical shows I just I just don't understand why it's something that they already count out when there's so many we've discussed a million different ways that you can do it and so many options so yeah and uh, I, I hate throwing out game of thrones and even walking dead and conversations like this specifically because they are such outliers and i need people to realize that like they are complete right. outliers and i get it you see the success of game of thrones and you see how big it is so you jump into the pool with everybody else but again talking about gambling talking about betting on certain mm -hmm. things like there is even more success to be the first one on a on something on a really hot mm -hmm. property uh, that can take you to completely new levels. Right. So anyway, we, we've just thrown out a million ideas. I think Cobra Kai is a, at least a start. Like if they were really taken by, and I haven't heard of talk about it yet, but if they were really impressed with how well that did, maybe we'll see the start of like just season reviews um, here in the near future. So that that could be a start. I, I hope that uh, I hope that Ash versus the Evil Dead doesn't get thrown in our face with a lot of this stuff too i know they had a deal worked out with that and obviously that show went away but but again a new show that you're betting on just make yes. sure that it's done efficiently and quickly first as for evil dead is so irrelevant because it was so it was such a well it just got canceled because of how small of a show it was and again that's not something you can but those are those are deals that you want, oh, no. though. The, yeah, deals, yeah, yeah, the yeah, deal yeah. that they, they had with Stars, and and another thing too, just to throw out. I, did, I didn't mean to comment on the deal. I, I just meant like, okay, I know, yeah. I know you weren't. I, I just want to. I don't know who listening at Collider knows this or not. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But there was a podcast that existed. We've talked about it a lot, called The Watch, that HBO hired to do their after show on HBO. Right. So there is business in this. That same company has also been hired to do Mr. Right. Robot. So this whole business that um, that Fernandez was talking about in the town hall about doing more awesome tacular thing and that exists for television already. People want after shows. They've been successful, and Collider knows this. So, anyways, again, beating the dead horse. If the watch can do it, if Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams can shepherd <laughs> the official Legion after show for an international TV app, they could do it. <laughs> um, I've pretty much let's uh, real quick. What's your take on Christian just being a wacko in the Schmoville Facebook group? It was strange. I don't know what was going on. I don't know why he dipped in. To say hey, and then just left. I don't know. Well, it's not just about... Because I think a lot of people were annoyed with him. Like, really? Are you going to come in here and, and act like that? When this Facebook group was built on Schmoes No, and a lot of people's takes... It, a lot of people are just simplifying it down to Schmoes No is dead. <laughs> Schmoes No doesn't exist. I think that's why some people don't like what you and I are doing here because we embraced the transition. I don't think Schmoes yeah. No is dead. I think, I mean, I, I think the temperature of that Facebook group and the vibe of that tightly knit community, because as you and I go along in this community, we pick up on the fact that there are so many different viewership habits when it comes to these people you might be talking to someone in schmoville who doesn't watch an ounce 
of the Smowdown. And the very next person that you talk to in that group watches every single thing that Collider does and right. not Schmoes. No, it's like everybody is totally different. But there is this upset group of people, and it made me laugh because it felt like Christian just got in there and riled them up <sighs> and then left and then, and then continued to post uh, gifts. Tim Robbins means so Tony Robbins. Tim, Tim Robbins. Robbins. Tony Tom. Robbins is a uh, motivational the, the speaker. speaker. So, right. He said that Me Too shouldn't exist. The guy that talks like this, I've got to do. He looks like a yeah. He's, uh, he's got like, a horse look face. Like Frankenstein. Anyways, uh, so beating beating the dead. Tony I'm Robbins. Tim Robbins. Anyways, uh, Tony Robbins. I'm Tony Robbins. <laughs> I'm Tim Robbins from the Hudsucker Proxy. Okay, that was a terrible... Mark Fernandez is like, Tony Robbins is my best friend. So uh, here's what I need to say to Collider and to Schmoville. I think, for, for those that are like, well, where's the where's Collider Live? We were promised the live show coming back. Listen, the, they're going all in on this movie season right now of Avengers Infinity War, Deadpool Solo, as they should. They're going all in on comic book drop. As they should go in all in on this stuff. I think what they are going to do, and if it's not what they're going to do, they definitely should do. The next thing that needs to ha happen to have just the biggest pop in the world is Collider Live. It needs to, it needs to happen... They need to reveal the beauty and the magic that was the Schmo Snow live show on Collider, give it its twist, and see that entire community just explode with new energy and excitement. And I'm telling you, Collider had it had that support from Schmoville already because of the Schmoes being involved with it. But to have this uh, this desert, this drought, if you will, of the live show, and then to just bring it back. Like, they need to do a surprise drop with this thing. I would even say don't even fucking promote it. Drop it like a new Drake album and just be like, hey, guys, live show's going up in 15 minutes. <gasps> what? Just have people freak the hell out. Like, <laughs> that would set this community off. Do it. Yeah. You know, I probably just spoiled it, so go ahead. <laughs> Did, uh, is Caption this toast? I don't know, but but let's be honest. The experiment happened, and I don't think it worked. So I lo I love Cody. I love Cobster, and I'm not saying you didn't. No, do it wasn't. Their, it wasn't their didn't fault. Do no. a good job, but it's if anything, it belongs on social media. That's where that humor lives, probably. Yeah. Um. I don't see one from last week. I see one from two weeks ago, and I had three point nine thousand. So if it's not toast already, I could see it three weeks ago. So. A little bit more cushion with an older episode, only four point three k. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I'll tell you then, something. Go ahead. I'm I'll sorry. I'll tell you something that they that I would have liked to have seen this week, just as a fan, capitalizing on uh, Solo about to come out and this uh, the sandwich of Solo and just Donald Glover popping like crazy. I would have loved to have seen my dog just come into the room just now, which is just what happened. But I would have also have loved to have seen like a top 10 Donald Glover thing going on. I don't know what it could have been like, but top, top 10 Donald Glover involved things. I have, I don't know. I have, just go ahead and capitalize on I that. have breaking news. So India's in the room. Like you mentioned, we are recording this on Thursday evening. Like Jedi council dropped right before we hit record. That was an hour ago. Guess what just came up like four minutes ago on Collider. What? I don't know. I'm letting my dog out. What happened? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. One on All one. Right, I'm back. Go ahead. <laughs> one on one with Christian Harloff with and Tony Robbins. No. With the creators of Cobra Kai. Oh, well, yeah, of course. So he's doubling down on one on one. It goes up an hour after. He Oh my god, I'm so frustrated. He was so dead set against TV coverage, and they are doubling down on Cobra Kai, of all fucking things. I haven't seen it. I'm sure the show is wonderful. I can't wait to watch it. It's just hilarious that this is happening right after he shut down everything that we said. That's amazing to me. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's a good move, though. It's a good business um, move uh, to, to, to capitalize on it. I agree. It. Um, Watch, watch it be the lowest one on one, no. and then he th he throws that he throws. Oh, I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying that's what he'll throw in our face. Well, 
It's the lowest rated one on one. So people are yeah, people are interested in the creators so, of Cobra Kai. That doesn't mean you so don't real cover quick, Westworld. I, just while we're on it, actually, I'd forgotten to put this in, in my my rundown just because uh, it's been a crazy day. Um, <laughs> One on one last week, very fascinating, incredible episode with uh, John Caparulo, yes. somebody that we've had the uh, the pleasure of seeing with Mark Ellis, and this episode of one on one. In fact, it, we ta- I hadn't listened to it yet, and you came and talked to me about it, and we're kind of picking my brain because of my fandom mm-hmm. of the Joe Rogan experience. And for anybody that listened to that um, episode, knows that. A lot of the episode was talked about a lot of drama that went on between John Caparulo and Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan or Joey Diaz, Joey Diaz, who is a part of Joe Rogan's crew. Such, I'm sorry, go ahead. You and I, you and I were like, we were acting as totems of, of these individuals. Like, you and I were going back and forth. I was playing Caparulo and you were playing Rogan, and we were going back and forth as to who should be right or wrong in this scenario. It was pretty. It was a pretty. Fun well, it was just interesting because I I've known about this entire thing, and I, I told I, eh, I don't think I did tell Christian this, but I I've known about this whole thing for as long as it's existed because I mean for a long time I listened to every single episode that Rogan ever put out for like. 600 episodes or something crazy like that and i was aware of it and yeah to be honest because of the because of my respect for joe rogan because of his character that he's built up over the years not character like a wacky clown but character in terms of his honor i did yeah i kind of just trusted what he was saying and my perspective on john caparulo was this negative connotation that he had sort of had so much so that when we went and saw him with, um, with, uh, Mark Ellis in Cincinnati, when you told me that was who he was with, that was the only thing that went through my mind. And man, is, is that sort of a shame to, again, not give somebody the benefit of the doubt and to hear their side of the story. It's actually pretty disappointing being a massive Rogan, the massive Rogan fan that I am to have, such a strong point of view of of all of this stuff and to not have a conversation about it with the man uh, i thought it was a great interview with christian i thought christian did a great job being uh being objective about it too and asking deeper questions and not just taking everything for face value right and the the point i made is that you, you just never know what kind of show one-on-one is going to be like that was a very like candid open i i'm fascinated I've, t- I've said this before plenty of times. I'm fascinated just listening to comics talk. So it, it's one thing to hear a comic to sort of talk about their history and placement. Like hearing Christian just talking about his history at the comedy store, that's some of my favorite stuff to listen to. I I love listening to comedians just talk about being comedians. Uh, it's something I'm fascinated with. And then when you add in all the drama with another comedian that I'm aware of, and like it was, it was really, really fascinating um to to hear all of that and i really really appreciated the show uh i love one on one i i didn't mean to make it sound like the cobra kai episode won't won't be good they're all they're all different and it's either like with this cobra kai stuff it's probably going to be a lot of promotional kind of discussion how did this come to be how it's going to be totally different than the caparulo show but that's what makes uh one on one so good Absolutely. Yeah, let's move on. You want to talk about Jedi Council? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with all the, all that stuff. Let's let's get into Jedi Council. So, I know you want to talk about the Denny's episode. I I could only make fun of it last week because I hadn't seen it yet at the time. Um, it's still hilarious to me. If you had told Christian Harloff five years ago that you're going to be doing a Star Wars show out of a Denny's, I know he'd be laughing his ass off. Um, the thing that got me really, really pumped, it was the littlest thing. They did a, a promo video, and I had mentioned, either last week or the week before that, I wanted to see them promote things that were coming on their social media. And I wanted to see like a Today on Collider type thing, where the camera is just following somebody walking into the studio. It could be very, very candid, pumping people up for what's coming and, and, and more than just a promotional banner for like the smell down live. Like that is an example of it, but I meant more so on a daily basis. So when they 
cranked out that promo video for their Instagram. I thought it was so well done, even though we're talking about like a 20 second video. I loved it. I I was fist pumping like this is the kind of shit. This is where I want Collider to go, and uh, I just got really hyped from that stupid Instagram video. But it, but it worked on me, and uh, it was just really really well done. So anyway, the actual episode. <laughs> Jay yeah, Williams. well, I thought the episode itself was absolutely incredible and fantastic. So. Listen, we've talked about it before when we talked about the Schmodown. So much energy going on in the episode. I loved, loved, loved the decision to not make the restaurant just completely silent for the taping and filming of the show. <laughs> I love the background chatter. I yeah. love the background noise. It made it. It made mm-hmm. the energy feel more uh, lively. And the fact that they were having to kind of like raise their voice to talk to each other, like it felt great it felt fucking fantastic i love i love was I eating it's fine man like i i'm such a fan uh, yeah. of stuff like this not only that but like it it was just done really really well i love the angle i love the people were behind them and we, listen again ball is in collider's court right now because i have i made this point a few weeks ago it's fascinating to see what one of these weekly flagship shows look like when you have to take it from filming to putting it together. It felt so yeah. different. And yeah, even though they were sitting inside of a Denny's eating with people around them talking in the background, it still <laughs> looked so much different than it anything really good. I've ever seen. And then lastly, but not leastly, uh, listen, Collider. You've given you blew our socks off with top fifty superheroes. How great that looked! You blew us away now with this Jedi Council episode. I hate to tell you, but you're l- raising the bar, and your move now because it it looks so good to not do more stuff like this on a consistent basis. So the point that you're making, and I I might be putting words in your mouth, but I think the point you're making is. It's interesting to see all of the other stuff that they're doing look better than some of the flagship stuff. Yeah, and I get why. I mean, I get why they have they have the uh, you know they have this this set. They have these cameras. They have the ability to do it live. The TriCaster and all this stuff, and and that's all well and good. Like for something like Movie Talk, of course. Like I get it, being live, being topical, and all this stuff, absolutely. But I mean. We talked a lot before we started doing Afterthoughts about what the move to move uh, to a new studio would look like, how it would feel. Well, <laughs> you put it in Denny's, and it already looks like we've gone to Collider 3.0. And I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be disparaging to to what they have now. I think the graphics package is is great, and it's a, a nice little middle ground. But it's like if we th- if we can think about how to make Collider feel and look different without having to completely go crazy changing the set and the background and this and that. I mean, yeah, it might be beneficial to do either either design a new show, a new quote-unquote flagship show around just looking as good as something like this does or ha- trying to figure out a way to make Jedi Council look this great every single week. Not that it doesn't look good now. That's not what I'm saying. It's like it's like basically living in a shitty town that you think is fantastic your entire life, but then somebody takes you to another place and you're like, holy shit, places look like this? You guys got a Target instead of a Walmart? Like it's just it's just really, really nice, man. I think it looks fantastic. You know how you make fun of me because I took I talk so highly of my trip to Florida like three years ago? When it yeah, was did just, I just describe your experience? Yeah, that that's what it was like. Like, <laughs> movie talk is me in Frankfurt <laughs> at my full time lame job, and <laughs> something like Jedi Council at Denny's is like getting to go to Florida for the week. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> and I, I hope. I mean, I would hope to God that they, they don't get defensive over it, but it's just like, look at how different it can be with with just more time and care. I guess it depends on who you ask because if you were to talk to Joey about that or whoever is filming that additional stuff, 
them as creators, I don't know how outspoken they are about it, but I know those people are like, this, this is something else. This is where I'm really utilizing, whether it's like cinematography, like uh, I think it was Joey or Frank who put together the top 50 superhero list. There's color correction in those videos, for God's sakes. It's like they're actually putting some of those skills to use in, in ways that movie talk doesn't allow. So I know that those people are thinking, this is what I want to be doing. Um, I want to know, I meant to ask you this outside of Jedi Council, but while we're on the point, I, I wonder how many people work at Collider. So we talked about Mark Riley, and we interviewed Mark Riley uh, on After Schmo, and I've talked to him outside of the show as well. He always mentions that Collider hired him because they were looking for um, a Swiss Army man, a Swiss Army knife of a man that can do just a little bit of everything. I think what my question is, why isn't every employee considered a Swiss Army man? Because I think some of the fear, some of the fear is that a lot of those people don't know how to operate cameras. They don't know how to operate mics. When I podcast with Roka, (laughs) <laughs> when I podcast with Roka, he's always doing dishes in the background. He acts like he doesn't know how to plug up his mic to his laptop. Every single time I go over that with Roka <laughs> when we do stuff together. I'm wondering how many of those people have all of those skills in place. Because I think it would be interesting to find out that, you know, I think Perry, she runs her YouTube channel. She probably knows how to turn on her camera, point and shoot. I don't think everybody there does that. I th- I would be curious to know if everybody learned a little bit of everything, how much more could actually get done? Because I want to know I want to know h- how experienced with cameras and audio Christian actually is. You know what I mean? It, as opposed to relying on he he talked about taking up time in the studio. So when he shoots one on one, why does Christian need? Joey to man a camera. I don't know that that's actually the case, but it could be on one of their shows. Why Why can't one person run their entire show as, lo- as long as one person's there to sort of monitor at the beginning and come in and out? Like, I'd be curious to know who's actually behind the scenes during the filming of a show because when you see Perry shoot her pro-looking YouTube videos and you find out it's only her doing it, then it's like, why can't, people at Collider do that for themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's something that you and I have talked about off air quite a bit. It's something that you and I pride ourselves on doing and just being able, I have this sort of unofficial motto of just that if I have to ask anybody else to do something for me that I can't do, then maybe I just shouldn't do that one thing. Uh, Like for instance, I don't know how to do after effects. So (laughs) <laughs> we have to sort of meet in the middle on how our graphics look on our intro on our YouTube videos or something like that. But I want to learn. I want to make sure I can do it so I don't have to ask anybody else to do it. Um, I do think there we have to speak to level of quality. Right. Where that's something that maybe they're thinking about. Like, well, if if I do it, it's going to take me a really, really long time to get to the point where I can do that and it be up to the level of the quality, the standard, at least that Collider has for itself or that it's set for itself. Right. Luckily, there are people in place that if you did whatever you can do, you could probably, it's probably uh, wouldn't be as bad as you think to just send it to somebody and be like, hey, my audio is just a little off here. You throw a compressor and on it, and then, hey, it actually wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, cool. Sounds great. But I will also throw out the fact, one of my absolute, again, to throw it back to uh, Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk, one of my favorite quotes is that perfection is nothing more than an excuse to not do something. So if if that's your constant worry and constant thought of, well, I don't want to do this thing that is obviously advantageous because you're already thinking of a million different reasons of why it wouldn't work as opposed to just doing it and trying it, then I don't really know what to tell you. Like, right. just, fucking, just fucking do it. Just try it. So, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I was sort of gas bagging a little bit i was sort of arriving at my point while i was talking i guess the best way to iron that out there are a million factors that i can't consider 
because I just don't know exactly how everything is run over there. But when I think about like what Copster does, Copster is, with the exception of Caption This, you will never see Copster because he is strictly a behind-the-scenes guy. I, I, I guess my my point is I would like to see everybody be able to do a little bit of everything as opposed to Copster is only this or Perry or, or Christian is only on camera. Uh, I know he's like the number two or number three over there, but there's I, I, I just want to know how smooth all that operates because i think if everybody did a little bit of everything a little bit more could get done there's again like i said there's a million factors they don't they don't edit really anything in post like things just kind of go up and like they just have their own way of running it as a matter of fact you know why i don't care to be wrong on this show why because if i'm wrong enough (laughs) then their mentality over there becomes okay Let's bring these guys out here and actually show them how it's done. So the more wrong I am, the better, because I will benefit in the long run. And maybe they'll fly us out and we'll get to see firsthand what actually goes on. <laughs> well, Ryan Selling, I love that uh, I love that you brought this up as if we didn't talk about this off of air. Um, we did have this conversation off air that uh, I think it would be beneficial to actually shadow them for a day. See a, a day-to-day what's happening, the ins and outs. Maybe we have a better perspective on what is actually going on. Then we can come in and say, you know what? We were wrong. They they have no time to film a 10-minute video in the bathroom. This uh, is brand new information. But until that happens, I'm going to continue to be wrong on purpose. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's not going to stop us from wildly speculating on what you should and shouldn't <laughs> be doing. To quote Perry Nimroff, it's a good show. You know what? They should fly out to kentucky and shadow us and see what goes into what we have to do every day how about that gas up the jet (laughs) anyways back on topic did you have anything else on the on the denny's uh no i um i think that's pretty much pretty much it man um i only really have i just have a couple things to say about heroes and then i'm pretty much done i think i can i can lump it all together in that both episodes of <laughs> both episodes of Heroes Monday's show I thought completely swallowed up their guest. I think her name was Claire, if I'm not mistaken. She just Claire. got eaten alive. Yeah, Claire from Claire. Lost. Yeah, Claire. She just got eaten alive. At least that was my opinion of the episode. Um, she flew in. Uh, I believe she was from Britain. She came in from the UK. And she works for the BBC. And I'm not saying it's her fault. I, I think it might have taken six to eight minutes before Snap even went to her on a topic. And How many people were I at the know, table? Four. My silence says everything. Well, it, it, it's an interesting conversation because I don't know if it's commentary on the fact that she didn't come to play or everybody wasn't considerate enough or it was just that she like could she just not hang i or, i don't know what did snap not go to her enough i just felt like even when she did talk even when she did have a take she just said considerably less and then you unfortunately you just get swallowed up because you have burnett and snap and amy going back and forth and they're riffing and they know what they're doing they they're veterans with Collider Heroes. That was just my take. I, I didn't look in the comment section. I didn't see anybody notice this. Um, it was funny. The uh, The Wednesday show got hijacked in a completely different way. It was a better way because Rob Liefeld sort of took over. And uh, it, it was not a traditional episode of Collider Heroes. It, I think it meant to be. I think Snap had every intention to include Rob Liefeld in just the show that they do. But it became the Rob Liefeld show. Luckily, he's a very interesting figure, so I didn't mind it necessarily, but it was just funny how both, I had very distinct opinions on both episodes of Collider Heroes. Yeah, I I didn't get a chance to check out Heroes this week, but what I can speak to in terms of guests coming onto the show, um, there's always, even let's throw out the whole four person thing. I think it's always difficult when you bring in a new person that's not on a lot to a crew that is so comfortable with each other because it, it can just be kind of t- 
tough to find the rhythm if everybody else is kind of uh, their brains are synced up and they're linked on a just different level it's hard to f- sort of find it's curse of the fourth chair that we always talked about on um on the Shmosno live show it's just hard to find room to insert yourself you almost have to go above and beyond in order uh, to make your voice heard and the scoop of the week John Schnepp claimed to have seen the Loch Ness monster. Was it in the, uh, Was it in the Punisher? Yes. Must have been cut out of the version that I saw that also showed Moon Knight. Something I thought about <laughs> earlier this week. I remembered some kind of announcement that Schnepp and Campia and Robert Meyer Burnett. I remember some announcement that they were producing a a remake or a reboot of at the time I couldn't remember if it was Last Starfighter or Battle Beyond the Stars and I mentioned it to a friend of ours who knew exactly what I was talking about and he said yeah it was Battle Beyond the Stars it was on their Instagram but it was a complete joke like they made it up and I was like wait a minute why what makes that a joke it's not funny they just stood in front of a camera and said they're making a movie. Like that's just a lie. That's a nothing that's a nothing joke. And then he linked me to it and I just thought it was so weird because I saw a comment from Snap uh, on that post saying this was just a joke. We were just having a bit of fun. It was four guys standing in front of a concrete wall announcing a film project. I was like that's <laughs> that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I don't. I don't remember the date on it. It might have been on April Fools, and that's one thing that I'm missing. But it, it's still really stupid. <laughs> it's like three years ago. Yeah, I could, comp- I completely missed this. Yeah. So um, it was like not three surprising years ago. I, I just, it was funny how I happened to think of that this week. Because case in point, Snub is ridiculous. Um, do you have anything else? That's all I got, man. It's been, uh, it's been a good week of Collider stuff. I'm excited excited for the future we got deadpool and solo stuff coming up so excited to see what they do what the hell do i title this episode perry love i don't know jay williams where can they find you online Fra- frank frank versus perry which one is better you can find me <laughs> at jay williams share the a to the y to the e twitter and instagram it's the same for both if you want to support this show you can actually do it by going and buying shirts from another show that we do called Sight and Sound, sightsoundpod.com. Just released some shirts absolutely celebrating our love for Donnie G himself, Donald Glover. If you are a fan of Donald Glover, like myself, like Ryan Selling, and like so many other people, you can do your support. Do your support. You can support the man and us by picking up one of these shirts. He is the Renaissance man of our generation. That's how I take it to Ryan's. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WhatUpSnell. Please support Sight and Sound. Frank Lucatuardo is doing it, and I fucking love him for it. Links to everything Sight and Sound are in this very description. They weren't there last week because they pasted Movie Talk's description in our episode. But that's okay. I believe in that. That's all I got. We'll see you next week on Collider Afterthoughts. Take it easy. Bye-bye.